Hey guys, Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire. It was really hot last week, so me and Tammy decided to go to a museum. We went to the Telfair Jepson Center. There are three museums with the Telfair Museums that you can go to downtown, and it's a great place to go when it's just too hot outside. So we got admission. It's $25. You get to see all the exhibits, and you get to see all the museums that you would like to go to within seven days. There's three of them there. Um, this is the lobby. They had this big gigantic moth or butterfly looking thing up in the sky there, which was really cool. Um, Tammy was glad to get to go with me. She said she could go with me since it was inside uh, and we weren't going to be going outside in the heat. Now, uh, one of the exhibits they had was about expression, impressionism, not expressionism. And they had a bunch of stuff that was for uh, for children and for other people that you know, need to learn what Impressionism is. And they had a really nice little um, computer animated thing that you could look at and it describe what what it was and how, uh, what made it Impressionism. Um, had, of course, plenty of examples on the walls uh, for you to look at and then it would ask you questions and kind of walk you through um, how you felt about it and, uh, you know, what it was supposed to do. Uh, as you looked at this kind of art and what the artists wanted to do with uh, with this style. Uh, very well done, easy to understand, and they had a lot of beautiful examples of that type of art, that type of painting, and uh, you were able to go around and really enjoy yourself. They also had an exhibit from uh, Richard Barthe, who was a uh, an artist. Oh, Tammy got sidetracked here because there was a, a statue with frogs. So I had to look at the statue with frogs. Uh, Richmond Barthe, Harlem Renaissance sculptor. It had a uh, pretty good, um, you know, it showed all, a lot of his works uh, from the 1920s up until later in his life. He had a long career, um, very beautiful sculpt sculptures. Uh, there were all kind of different styles and, um, you know, it kind of told the story of each one of them, what they represented, um, you know, told a little bit about a little history of his life and uh, why he did the things that he did and uh, described a lot about some of the people that the sculptors were made um, to represent uh, and it was just a, it was really nice. Um, they had, of course, everything, you know, it's a museum so they have it where you can't touch it, but they always uh, seem to do a good job of, of describing how things are created and um, you know to give you some in-depth uh, knowledge to see you know what makes makes this special besides just seeing it with your eyes and seeing that it is special um, his exhibit had probably it was in a couple of rooms and uh, this is Othello I thought I like this one this was my favorite one um, but it was in a couple of rooms, and there were probably maybe 40 sculptures in there uh, that you could look at. And so it was really enjoyable to see that. Um, there's, a, there's an example of one of the rooms and how they had everything laid out there for you to see. And there's a quote that was from him. It said, I hope my people will look into my works and uh, see a reflection of themselves. And then he wanted them to be able to say, look how beautiful you are. Um, there was a uh, balcony out there that was outside. We didn't spend much time out there. It was very hot. Uh, and then, of course, throughout the halls, uh, they had, you know, different exhibits of different kind of sculpture that you could stop and look at. It was just one thing after another to, to see. Um, that's from the third floor looking down uh, where you come in, the entrance, and that's that, that big moth or thing. This, was, this is the big exhibit that's there right now. It's the Age of Armor. And uh, I was very impressed with this. They had three or four big rooms absolutely full of all types of uh, armor from all over the world and um, different time periods. It described uh, where it was from. It described how much each piece weighed. Um, it gave a brief history of the use of armor. 
uh, had like some things that you could like, you know, stick your head in there and see what it looked like looking out of one of these helmets. Uh, it had examples of armor from different parts of the world uh, over hundreds of years. And uh, it was just very, very interesting and, and amazing to see the abilities that these, you know, these craftsmen had all over the world uh, to create, you know, these these uh, weapons of war. Really, um, they all had a purpose. Uh, every type of armor, um, you know, was pretty specific to a to a particular style of fighting. Uh, so depending on what your role was in the in the military um, determined what kind of armor that that you would use and um, it was there's really a lot more than what people realize you know and also a lot of it is ceremonial a lot of the armor was for looks it's like you know just like today the the military has uniforms that they have dress uniforms uh, there were there was armor that was dress dress armor uh, and then there was some armor that was for actual fighting. And some of the armor was for uh, tournaments and jousting and things like that. And there was different kinds of armor for different kinds of jousting uh, because they did all kind of different things. Now here is one of the most intricate pieces. This was worn by the Papal Guard. Um, so it is a ceremonial piece of armor. And you could tell you know, by the detail and all the... Yeah, this one's just unbelievable. There's another one, another example of something similar to that. Um, you know, where people would wear this that weren't particularly going to fight. Now, this sword um, was as tall or taller than I am uh, on the wall there. This section here, it talked again a little bit about the tournaments. And uh, there were, everybody thinks of tournaments, and they think of the guys that would joust and ride on the horses and have the big, long... Um, you know, jousts where they would hit each other and knock each other off the horse, and that is a style of a tournament that they would have, but they had all kinds of other kinds of fighting that they would engage in as well. Um, and um, a lot of these pieces weighed, uh, some of them 50 pounds, uh, some of them less, depending on exactly how much armor they had. Uh, and of course, eventually, with the development of firearms and other kinds of weapons, uh, armor began to die out. But we still see examples of armor today. Um, and and uh, here, here's an example. That's James Oglethorpe, who was the founder of Georgia in armor. And there was absolutely no need whatsoever in the 1700s to even bother trying to fight in armor. But there's a picture of him in armor. Um, there's a Norman Rockwell painting of a museum with uh, all these guys and their shining armor and there's a guy down there eating his sandwich on break. <laughs> uh, pistols. Here's an example of a couple of pistols. These weighed about two and a half pounds and it'd take you about five minutes to uh, get it loaded and point it and shoot it. Uh, Matchlock musket, same thing. These had a huge impact on uh, battle and fighting. The, this thing was about I want to say about 15 pounds, 14 pounds. And again, it would take forever to load, forever to shoot, and you'd have to load it again. But even that had a huge impact, and uh, the armor began to die out. Um, here were some really good examples of, you know, the talks about the 16th century when it really kind of became the romanticized kind of thing about knights and knights in shining armor. There's a beautiful... Uh, full array of armor there that they show those those uh, pikes and things like that would be a way that you could snag up under somebody's armor and pull them to the ground so that you could uh, injure or kill them uh, they had all kind of specialized weapons that was Joan of Arc in front of Tammy uh, there's a really old piece of armor a Corinthian armor from the Greek city-state you can see how plain looking it was compared to these other ones uh, some of these were just wild looking, you know, it'd be pretty scary to come up against a guy wearing something like that. Now, underneath the armor, you would have a mail coat, um, and this was chain mail, and this was supposed to keep you from being pierced by weapons and stuff. Kind of reminds me of something Elvis would have wore. Uh, and then they had uh, some more interactive exhibits, like I could put my hand in this and move it around, and it felt exactly like you would think it 
would feel when you hear the armor creaking and stuff and you move it that's how it felt uh exactly what i expected so moving around in this stuff would have been difficult uh again here's here's armor for a cavalryman it was a different style of armor that they would wear than other people um, all these things had their place all were, were very uh, utilitarian um, but also beautiful and uh, you know formed like i said by artists here are bolts uh, these would be shot from like a um, uh, not a well yeah a crossbow and you would you would crank it with this those would pierce armor uh, eventually there were long bows that would pierce armor uh, of course the the any firearm would would pierce armor um, and then I took a few pictures so you could get see some real detail there of a few of these pieces so you could see the the intricate uh, the abilities you know of these people uh, there was a, a children's section, the interactive children's section for, for, for children of different ages. They had another section on the second floor about Impressionism. Um, and this one was really kind of fun because you could, uh, uh, it was an up close and personal kind of thing. And it really let you see what this kind of art was about. And they had like a landscape gallery and it was, it was three dimensional. And so they had like all these flowers and stuff like you were in an actual garden. And then the walls just covered with Impressionist style, um, you know, landscape. And what was really cool about it is as you walk through, uh, if you got close to it, it would, you, you'd have like these three dimensional, like that fountain would come on. You'd have these butterflies flying around. Uh, this one in the floor had fish in the fountain, and uh, it was just pretty cool. You know, it was really it was really fun uh, that section, and of course, then it got into detail about what impressionism is, what makes it, how it's, um, you know, how you know you come up with ideas. Some of the people that were impressionists that were famous, uh, even just walking through it, there'd be butterflies on the floors, and like I said, all the flowers and the you know, everything was just for you to, uh, for your senses to kind of just get a um, feel for what Impressionism is about. Um, there you can see the leaves falling from the tree. And then they had a section of high school students' work, which was really nice. Um, I looked at all of those, and there was, there was stuff from everybody from elementary school up to middle school to high school and you know you can see here a lot of these kids are really talented and it was really cool to have their works on display and there was also out in the hallway a, um, a display of photography from uh, young people in the savannah area here was tammy looking at the 3d she really liked that um, then they had an education studio where i guess you could go and take classes uh, it wasn't you know active there's a cafe in the lobby there is uh, you know a place where you can sit down and eat a nice meal um, and then there was a uh, of course a store which Tammy spent a considerable amount of time in and you could see Telfair Square right out of the windows in the lobby um, a beautiful place uh, I really enjoyed going there I'm going to go back to the other museums and give you guys a report and of course you know that the exhibits change throughout the year so I'll be going back I really enjoyed this one and uh, thank you guys for watching Nichols Retirement Empire you guys have a good day I hope you enjoyed it